we need the first derivative so that we're able to take the derivative of this and that's going to turn into our second derivative which would be the derivative of a constant is zero, this just drops the derivative of this would be negative two times the derivative of cosine of theta is negative sine theta. So I can rewrite that as f double prime of theta is equal to two sine of theta. Ah, and would you look at that? We have a new unit circle. <laughs> Perfect. Isn't that awesome? Hmm. We're professionals here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot easier, right? Now, what do we do with this? Um, since we're f finding the concavity, we need to set the second derivative equal to zero. And find those critical points for the second derivative. This one's pretty easy, right? We just divide both sides by two. And now we're looking for zero when sine of theta is equal to zero. So again, this is the angle. And since this is sine, we're, we, we're going to be looking at the y coordinate of the, these coordinates out here. Mm -hmm. So when is sine zero? We have one at, well, and if our range is from zero to three pi, Zero to three pi, which is right there. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and write it. So okay. the three pi would look like this. It would wrap around. That would be two pi plus one more pi. That would be three pi. So that's as far as we can go. Mm -hmm. So what would be the angles that we get? Okay. So we so we can't use zero because it's restricted by exactly. So we can't use this one because our interval for the original equation is from, let's write it down here, the theta has to be between 0 and 3 pi, pi except it's ex excluded, mm -hmm. right? So it can't be that, what are So the next one, correct, just pi. Pi. If we wrap around... Uh, it's going to overlap at 2 pi, which we can use now. So we would also have 2 pi. Those are going to be our critical points for our second derivative. So we need our number line and the two. We're going to label the two critical points, which is pi and 2 pi. What would be our test points? Okay. Uh, for region A, the first region I chose pi over 2. Choose this one as a test point. Region A would be pi over 2. Next, we need one in between pi and 2 pi, so I chose 3 pi over 2. Pi and 2 pi, so this one? Mm -hmm. 3 pi over 2. And then next, I chose... I chose an angle between 2 pi and 3 pi, so halfway between those two is 5 pi over 2. And the 5 pi over 2 is 2 pi plus half a pi. Plus pi over 2. Mm -hmm. So this would be... I get 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2, which is this one right here. Right, except we're wrapping around once, mm -hmm. and then over and over. So this would be 5 pi over 2. Now let's plug them in to our second derivative. Which is 2 sine of the angle here. Let's go ahead and plug in pi over 2 first. And what's the evaluation of this? On a unit survey, I noticed that at pi over 2, the y-coordinate is 1. The y-coordinate is 1. 
So this is going to be 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So that's region A. That indicates that we're increasing from here to here. And now we need a test. Next region, B, which would be 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. We, we might lose the unit circle there, so I'm going to bring it down. So, for this, we're testing region B now. Well, 3 pi over 2 is down here. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So that means that we would be decreasing from here to here. And what's going to happen at 5 pi over 2? Notice that 5 pi over 2 is the same thing as just regular pi over 2. So we're going to get a positive 1 again. Okay, so this one and this one are almost identical. And that's going to be a 2. That's region C. So we're increasing from here to here. Awesome. I like this. This is great. <laughs> now we just need the intervals, right? Exactly. So we're concaving, concave up, and concave down. What are the intervals where we concave up? Okay, uh, we're going to be concave up from 0 to pi. From 0 to pi. And, and the other interval for concave up? Anyway. Is going to be from 2 pi to 3 pi. 2 pi to 3 pi. And when do we concave down? Uh, just in between there, from so pi to 2 pi between here, mm -hmm. from pi to 2 pi. And now to find our inflection points, we plug in pi and 2 pi into our function, which is this, theta minus 2 sine of theta. What are our two critical points? We're going to plug in pi and 2 pi. So if I plug in pi here, what's the result of that going to be? Sine of pi is going to be 0. Mm -hmm. And so the sine so is, is going, going to be 0. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just end up with a pi left over. So that's pi pi. What happens if I plug in a 2 pi? You're actually going to get... <clears throat> so I'm plugging in a 2 pi, right? That's my x. The result would be a zero for the sine function, and you'll get just two pi left over. Cool. So those are my two inflection points, my IPs. If you have any questions on taking derivatives of trigonometric functions, or anything else in the video you've just seen, you can reach us through YouTube by leaving a comment, or visit our website below. And we pinky promise to answer the most frequently asked questions with a supplementary video. Or your money back. <laughs>